Okay, now let's wire up our chips. So we've got a 555 timer here. Let's get that guy working. Positive rail here. So uh, that goes to pin 8, which is, you see there's the dot on the chip. It's right, it's right there, pin 8. Uh, we also need the reset pin to be powered, which is uh, 4, pin 4. Uh, that's pin 1, goes to ground. That's our negative. Zero, or actually our zero volts. Uh, so that's pin one right there, two ground. Seven, six, so there's pin two and six. Connect together. Okay, I'm just gonna bend them over, so if I need to take the chip out, I can get to the chip. Okay, uh, next thing, our timing component uh, capacitor is our one microfarad electrolytic. I'm just gonna put that from pin two to ground, like that. R7, it looks like, is our 1K. There's our 1K. I'm going to put that from hot to pin 7, which is right next to power here. Okay, uh, our 47K, we're going to take that and put him from pin 7 right over across the chip, which you shouldn't really do, but it's fine in this case, um, to pin 6 and 2, and it's the same place where the capacitor is connected. Also in the capacitor, make sure it's the long lead because it's a, it is a polarized capacitor. Okay, now we got to start wiring up our decade counter. If that's pin 1 right here, then 8 must be this pin. That needs to go to ground. Like that. Pin 16, and since this is a 16 pin chip, and that's 1, then the opposite side 16 right there, that goes to hot. We also need to ground pin 15, 13. 16 is power, so 15 and then 14 is something else, and then one over from 14 is 13. So that's those two connected together because they're both going to ground, and then I need a wire to connect them over to ground. Hmm, kind of messy. Whatever works. See, it's connected to those two pins. There's one pin in the middle not connected to anything yet. Actually, we can connect that up to our 505 timer because that's pin 14. So. Uh, the output of our 555 timer, 555 timer I should call it, is 3. So if we go over to our timer, 1, 2, 3, goes to pin 3, and goes to pin 14. Okay. Okay, this next part is going to require a lot of wiring, and we're going to make sure we connect the wires and the diodes to the right pins. Uh, as you can see, the chip doesn't have the uh, outputs in order. But that's okay because I've already arranged them here on the diagram in uh, the order we need to make our scanning circuit work. Far right LED. Ah, pin 1 goes to that diode LED combination there. So there's our diode. Uh, I'm going to use short wire, I think. Use this one. Okay, so from that diode to pin 1. Well, that's easy. That's pin 1 right there. Okay, uh, our next one is going to be pin 5 going to that diode. Pin 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. There we go. The next diode here. And that goes to pin 10. Now, where's pin 10? Well, if that's 8, and that's 9. 10 is the one right there next to it. Okay. Uh, next one is 6. Pin 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Let's move over right here. So there's 6. And that goes to the next diode for the next LED. Like so. 7. Is the next one? Well, that's easy. Seven's right next to six. You need a long wire, but not too long. I'm going to make this one because I don't have a good size for it. Uh, so, strip one side, put it in, route the wire to the path I want, stop it just past the spot I want, cut it, and then strip the wire. Long but not too long and then 
put it in there to the next diode. Okay, so far so good. Uh, next one is nine. Nine's easy because we just did ten a while back there and there's eight. So, yep, there's nine. Let's try the shorter one. I know, I'll do it. I'll go like this. Go around that side of the chip. So, next one's four. Four doesn't need that long a piece of wire though, so let's use this. Four should be easy. It's uh, one, two, three, four. Let's route that over to that second diode on that same LED. Blah, 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 11. 11's right next to 10 there, so you go 9, 10, 11. I'm going to write this on the side, and that goes to the second LED, second diode. So it doesn't matter which diode it goes to, as long as the same LED. Ooh, two. Uh, next diode goes to two. So, there we go. One, two. Hopefully you're still following along. It's our last one, our last diode, which is on its own there. Goes all the way over to pin three. One, two, three. It's not occupied, so it's easy to figure that one out. Okay, and I think that's it. Let's see here. Yes, 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 yes. Oh, I see a mistake. This wire must have popped out or I put it in the wrong spot. There we go. Double check. Now we solved a potential future issue. Now we test the circuits. So I kept all the negatives on the bottom of the board, so we put a wire in there for the negative. It will go in. Does it want to go in? And all the positives are on the top, so I'll put the positive wire in the top. And uh, some breadboards are separated in the middle, so you have to jump your wires over. So you should only have to jump your one on that side and one on that side. But I don't have to because this board is connected all the way through. So there's my positive and my negative wires. Set my power supply to 9 volts. And hopefully, of course, it's going to start making noise on me. And hook up our positive. Actually, start with the negative. Should just always start with negative. Uh, ground first and then oh it works good and those uh, capacitors are enough to make it uh, fade of course my power is disconnected so we've made our Larson scanner and if you want to adjust the speed at which it does this you can just mess around with the uh, R8, the second resistor in the timing uh, in the 5, 555 timer, or you can change the capacitor value there. You could even put a potentiometer in place of that there. Now, this circuit's, you know, a lot of fairly good amount of wiring and uh, be a bit difficult to make a PCB for it, but you can do it. Uh, there are better ways of uh, doing a circuit like this. For instance, you could use a microcontroller and you'd have more pins available so you could have a much uh, larger array of LEDs and you could have varying effects and since the microcontroller's timing circuit is built into it or you have a crystal on there you already have your timing uh, system in which to set the time for the scanning the rate at which it scans and all that so it kind of makes it it kind of simplifies the circuit at the same time allows you to do more and have more LEDs but this works if you don't have a microcontroller and if you have parts lying around and you just want something simple so Simple enough, I guess. But there we go, that works. Pretty cool. Zoom, 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 zoom. Well, that's it for now.